All right, sounds I think like we're, we're on. I think we're ready. Okay. We're ready to rock and roll. I'm actually really intrigued by the number of folks that we have here today, this morning. Awesome. See some friends, some old friends and new friends in the crowd. Yeah, sounds good. All right, hello and welcome to Deploying from Cloud to Cloud. Um, Salesforce deployments made easy with Bitbucket pipelines. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Sheldon Callahan. Oops. I'm a developer um, advocate in, in developer relations with Atlassian, um, which means that I help developers be successful on our platform. Uh, a little bit of background about myself. I have a history in web development and also consulting prior to Atlassian. I'm also a former Salesforce employee. I worked on uh, the Dreamforce website 2014. And also, I volunteer my time at a local Shaolin temple, uh, where I also am the executive director. I teach and administrate um, SFDC um, dev and um, admin for that nonprofit. My name is Mark Klinsky. I am a developer at Atlassian, specializing in our Salesforce implementations. I have four years of experience with uh, Salesforce as a developer and admin. And uh, I've worked both in industry and consulting. I similarly have a web development background to my buddy over here. Um, in addition to working on the Salesforce platform for the last four years, I've also been biking the AIDS life cycle for the last four years. You can see my little photo over here. Um, it's a 545 mile charity ride from San Francisco to LA every year in support of the SF AIDS Foundation. Um, so we're going to talk about a cloud journey today. Um, so a little bit more history, a little bit more background. So I've been doing Salesforce development since 2009. And when I would try to work with other people, other devs, we would end up overriding each other's changes. Um, so I thought there has to be a better way to collaborate on Salesforce. Um, also, when my admin would make changes, um, I wouldn't see those in my org, and that would also cause deployment conflicts. I also needed a way of automating my deployments. Um, so that was another thing that I wanted to do. And so while at Atlassian, I'm a developer relations person, so I wanted to find out how we do this at Atlassian, and I reached out to Mark um, to see how our process here is at Atlassian. Let me talk a little bit about my cloud journey. When I first started working with Salesforce as a developer, and curious, who, who are the developers here? Show of hands. Wow, actually, most of the group. Awesome. When I first started off developing on the force.com platform, I wasn't familiar with version control or doing best practices for your whole application lifecycle management. Um, those were all new concepts to me. And initially, when you're working by yourself in a vacuum, it's OK to be a developer and make changes, hack away in your, in your org, in your sandbox, and then push those changes up with a change set. But when you start working with other people and you clobber their code, um, or if you start making changes and something breaks and you forgot what you had in a previous version, you realize that there is a better way to do things. And that's where a lot of the principles of uh, version control and the whole kind of automated deployment um, life cycle comes in. You do save a lot of time also when you do automated um, validation builds and deployments. And so I won't go back to uh, doing development the way I did before, just hacking away. Um, I'm always going to do uh, DVCS um, from here on out. Uh, so next, we're going to talk about uh, continuous in integration into uh, continuous in deploy uh, sorry, deployment. Um, so what does that mean? Um, so it means that we're always um, deploying features. Um, everything that we create has to be shippable, has to be reviewed, complete, and deployable to production. Um, so we're assuming that all of you here are at least familiar with the concepts of distributed version control systems like Git or CVS. How many people here are familiar with those? Okay. Yeah, pretty much everybody. Awesome. Um, historical, historically, people have been doing this with um, CI/CD servers like um, Bamboo or Jenkins. 
Um, all of those require you to set up a server. Um, in this case, with Bitbucket, um, we're allowing you to do that in the cloud with no server setup. Um, and it seems to go against the philosophy of SFDC by creating a server if everything is supposed to be in the cloud. And so this is part of the reason why we wanted to mirror the workflow of cloud uh, development and deployment. And I was really excited when Atlassian started offering um, the pipelines offering, which we're going to talk about today. Because if you're building for the cloud, why would you not be already building in the cloud? And wouldn't it be awesome if you could easily set up your own continuous delivery system in the cloud in less than an hour and have it fully integrated with your code uh, version control system and have it for free or cheap? Sounds really, really good, right? Yes. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, Bitbucket pipelines. So what is Bitbucket? Um, so Bitbucket is our Git hosting tool that allows you to collaborate on your code. Um, and all of this is done in the cloud. Um, so before, like I said, people used to use Bamboo or Jenkins uh, behind a firewall or on a server in order to do continuous integration. So Bitbucket Pipelines is our integration tool. Um, basically, anything that you can do with scripts or Ant, you can do with Bitbucket Pipelines. So I just want to talk a little bit about how you would set up uh, Bitbucket Pipelines. And this is just one of several different cloud offerings that do this similar kind of thing out there. Obviously, we work at Atlassian, and we want to share what we do internally and talk about our products with you. Um, but just know that this is uh, one of many tools out on the market today. Um, Pipelines uses Docker containers to run its uh, agents it, to run its jobs. Who's familiar with Docker? Some of you? OK. Docker is essentially just a virtual machine system, allowing you to run software um, in any environment. And it'll run the same no matter which environment you're working it on, working with. Pipelines uses a, there's a default Docker image that you're able to use that's basically a, a Linux repo that has basic tools on there. However, when we're doing deployments for Salesforce, we need to use Apache Ant and then the force.com migration library as well. So what I did was I created a, um, a custom Docker image. You're able to set up your own Docker images to use with pipelines. And um, I have this hosted on Docker Hub, so it's available uh, publicly for anyone to use. You can create your own as well, your own Docker image. You can see here I've got my Docker file up here. It's 11 lines. And all of that we're talking about today is going to be available. Um, we're going to have everything available on our uh, developer.atlassian.com site um, in the future. So you'll be able to replicate this, self and, uh, this for yourself and then modify it. So you can hear, uh, see here that I've got in my, my Docker file, I've added um, Apache Ant so that we'll be able to use um, the force.com migration tool. And what I'm doing in my repos is I'm actually going to add the force.com migration tool to the repo itself as opposed to adding it to the Docker image because every time Salesforce has its uh, releases and we update the force.com migration tool, you can easily add it here to your repo without needing to recompile your Docker image. And it also allows you, doing it this way allows you to have your own build XML file and make your own uh, changes to your targets within that. And then lastly, it cuts down on the time needed to download the Docker image. Every time you do a Bitbucket uh, pipeline deployment, you have to download your Docker image from Docker Hub. So this way, it cuts down a little bit on the time and um, the minutes used for that. OK, within pipelines, all of the configuration is done within a settings file in the YAML format here. So you can see this is the, the basic uh, YAML file, settings file, that we're going to be building on over the course of this talk. You can see that I'm pointing to my Docker Hub image, mklinsky slash Salesforce. And then below that, on lines three through eight, this is where we're going to be setting up our specific pipelines for the branches that we're going to be uh, setting up. And you'll notice here that um, we'll talk a little bit more about this. But in this case, our first pipeline is for our feature branches, feature slash wildcard. And we'll talk a little bit more about what the script is doing in a minute. 
Last thing I want to mention here in the settings is you can set up specific environment variables. So, um, so what, what, what about passwords? I don't want to keep exactly. my passwords in my repo. You know, someone can download that and have yeah, access. What do you do about question. that? Great um, question. With uh, environment variables in Bitbucket, you can um, set those in secure variables so that they're not going to show up in your logs. They're not going to be visible to any of the users that are logging in to your repo. Um, and you can also set account level variables that are then able to be overridden at the repository level. So you can see just briefly here, it's, it's not super clear, but I've got um, some basic uh, settings here on the left at the account level. Um, and then on the, on the right side, where I've got the repository level settings, that's where I'm going to override my Salesforce username and the security token. Um, that's going to be separate for each environment that I'm going to be building to. So this is awesome, but how do we use this for Salesforce development? Great. That brings us to the next section here about deploying, excuse me, developing. Um, just to give you a little context first, let me tell you how we have our Salesforce org set up at Atlassian. Um, that'll just provide some color for uh, how we're setting up our builds. Obviously, we've got a production environment. We've got a full data sandbox that we call UAT that we do our staging in and testing. Then we have a shared developer sandbox that we integrate all of our work into. And then lastly, each developer has a separate uh, dev sandbox. And then we have a uh, Git repo that maps to each of these orgs, our production repo. Then forks, we have a, uh, a staging fork for our UAT environment. And then a dev fork um, that maps to the dev environment. And these are all exact, exact copies of each other. And then using forks allows us to have different repository level permissions for each repo, and then it also allows um, for syncing, downward fork syncing, um, which is helpful when we're doing changes directly in production and want to have those um, reflected down into the other sandboxes. All right, so that's just a little context on how we have our Salesforce org set up, and let's go into building features. At Atlassian, we like to test our features early and test them often. We want to make sure that things are going to work properly before we get further on into the dev process. So we create one feature branch for each discrete piece of functionality or bug fix that we're working on. We've got validation builds set up for each of those branches as well. So here, let's go back to our pipelines. Uh, YAML settings file, and we can see that we've got on line five, you can see feature slash wildcard. So anytime we set up a feature branch in Bitbucket, we're going to name it feature slash whatever. And then when we commit to that branch and push those commits to Bitbucket Cloud, Pipelines is going to run a validation build. You can see it's just one line on line eight. We're running the ant. Um, command, and the target that we're, we're going against, uh, we've called deploy empty check only. And you can see we're passing in those environment variables for a username, password, and token, the server address, either test.salesforce or login.salesforce. And then I also like passing in another parameter for the millisecond wait time. So are you telling me that I can create different scripts for different branches? Exactly. Yeah. So this is, um, this is our feature branch um, validation script here. And we're going to add a few more later. Let's see this in action. So I'm going to start in Jira. I'm going to create a branch here for this ticket I'm working on. And like I mentioned, we're going to name all of our branches feature slash the name of the branch. And so that'll tell pipelines later on that we're going to want to do a validation build. I'm going to check that branch out. I like using source tree for doing my git commands. And here, just for the demo, I'm just making an arbitrary change to a unit test. This is going to fail. I know for sure that this unit test is going to fail, but I want to show you how the validation branches work and that we're not going to be able to merge this branch in until we get a, a passing green build. So I'm going to create a pull request here, add my coworkers on as reviewers. And as soon as we've created that, you can see that Pipelines is doing a validation build, that validation build that we set up in our YAML file. 
Gonna speed this up. You can see that it failed, because I know for sure that it's gonna fail because I, I made the unit test fail. And you can see that we're not able to merge that branch in because we don't have uh, a passing build and we don't have an approval. So I'm gonna go back into my IDE. I'm gonna make a change to make the code actually pass so we can get that green build. And this is what Pipelines is doing. It's, it's running that one command there, that ant command. Obviously sped it up there. OK, so we've got a green build. And you can see that we've got an approval there. So I can now, at this point, continue. Very cool. So now that that feature is complete, how do we deploy it? Exactly. So we've got a different pipeline set up for the deployments. We'll go back to our YAML file here. You can see I've added another pipeline for the master branch on line 9. You can see that. And similarly, the script is only one line. We're doing one command. You can see there on line 12. We're also running ants. We just have a different build target this time. It's deploy code. So let's see it in action. I'm going to go back to Bitbucket here. And we're going to merge that feature branch in because we've got a green build and approval from the reviewers. And automatically, on the master branch, we have that master deployment taking place. And since this is a dev environment, we're not running our unit tests here. We're actually just doing the deployment. And it's successful. Awesome. So that's just for the dev branch. If we want to have that code pushed up in our dev pipeline to our UAT staging environment and production, we just have to do pull requests. So I'll show you how that works here. And one of the great things is because we've set up our for, or excuse me, our repos as forks, we only have to set up our Bitbucket YAML, Pipeline's YAML file once, and each environment shares the same code. But because we have those repository level environment variable overrides, everything points to the right org when we're doing a deployment. So we're deploying to staging right now because we created that pull request, merged it into the master branch of the staging repo. And we've got a green build here. And then lastly, let's do that for production. Creating another pull request here from staging to production, making sure we get a proper approval here, merging that in. And you can see on the production repo in pipelines, that automatic deployment build taking place. And obviously, in I'm just using dev orgs here, but in an actual production environment, your unit test code would be running. So the deployment would be just a little bit longer. And green builds. Awesome. That's great for traditional dev workflow. Um, but Salesforce allows you to make changes in the UI. Um, so how do I get that to trigger uh, pipelines, too? Yeah, that's a great question. That's one of the unique things that we deal with as Salesforce developers and working in this kind of application lifecycle management style is having changes going upstream and downstream at the same time. You might have an admin on your team who's doing a lot of work with uh, validate, excuse me, validation rules or log other sorts of logic or adding uh, custom objects and uh, fields in the UI. So we do need to have a way of getting those pieces of metadata down into your repo as well and part of your pipeline. So we have a way of doing that, saving UI-based changes. There's a little bit more setup involved here. I'll run through that quickly. And again, we'll have this all available on our developer.atlassian.com website so you can replicate this yourself. Now, there's a little gotcha here that we have to uh, consider. With pipelines currently, and remember, this is just in beta right now, so this might change in the future, but currently with pipelines, the only way to trigger a pipeline's deployment is by committing to a branch in your repo. When you're doing a UI-based change, you need to be able to manually run that pipeline build. So I created a workaround for that. Um, what I'm doing here is I created a separate branch called the Save Changes branch. And I'm adding a few other pieces here, as well as part of our setup. First thing you need to know is that because we're going to 
essentially do a git commit back to the repo. We also need to set up git and SSH keys for pipelines to use. Um, so in the save changes branch, I've also added a my known hosts file so that Bitbucket will be able to, pipelines will be able to um, commit back um, to Bitbucket. And here is my pipeline for this particular save changes branch. You can see it's a little bit longer than just one line. Essentially what we're doing is setting up our Docker image with the SSH keys to be able to write back to Bitbucket. Um, I'm also making a way for a custom commit message to be added to that commit so that this commit can also point back to Jira. Um, and then you can see on line 29, we're actually doing our ant command there to uh, retrieve the code. Get code is the deployment target there. And then lastly, we're writing that code back. Don't need to worry about it too much now. Again, as I mentioned, this will be available online after the talk. So let's do this in action. What we're going to do is we're going to create a custom field on the lead object. So here I am in, in Jira. I'm just going to transition that ticket. It's in progress. I'm going to go into my Salesforce dev org, create a new field here. We're going to call it t-shirt size. Everyone loves t-shirts. And it's a good place to store it on the lead object when you meet folks at conferences. All right, so we've created that field. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Bitbucket. I'm going to open up my save changes branch. And again, this is all from the UI here. And in my little update to trigger pipelines text file, I'm adding a custom commit message. We use Jira, so adding the Jira ticket number at the beginning of your commit message will trigger that, excuse me, will link that commit back to Jira. So now I've edited that, I've edited that file directly in the UI and created a commit through the UI. I didn't need to do anything with code at all. And since I did that uh, commit to the save changes branch, it's going to trigger my save changes pipeline build here. So it's calling out to Salesforce to my dev org. It's pulling that code down and then committing that code for that added field directly to the master branch for, that, for the added um, lead custom field. And now you can see there it is. That's on the master branch, that new field that I just created in, in the Salesforce UI. So that was a dev. But right. what if I make changes in, in production? What happens then? Yeah, great question. Um, so at this point, for this dev uh, code that we just added, it would go into the dev pipeline and be included upstream. But great question, Sheldon. A lot of times we add things directly into production. Sometimes, say it's you know a hot fix that we need to do for a broken formula field, or what if we need to do something like just add a pick list value? I mean, that's kind of a goofy thing to have to wait to go through your entire dev pipeline for that. So let's see something. Let's make a change directly in production and then show how we would um, bring that down into our other repos. We're adding a, a pick list value field here. Excuse me, a pick list value to a, a field. I'm going to change the order of the pick list values. So now I'm going back into, into Bitbucket to my production repo and to the save changes branch of my production repo. I'm adding my custom commit message to that update to trigger pipelines text file. And again, that's going to trigger the save changes build on the production repo, calling out to our production instance of Salesforce, grabbing those changes, and committing them to the master branch of the production repo. You can see here that commit um, for those added fields. You can see my custom commit message. And that was all done through the UI. So now let's sync those changes down from production to our staging repo, our UAT repo. And again, this is all being done through the UI. In Bitbucket, you have uh, just one click to commit your changes downward in your forks. And then naturally, that will run that uh, staging master branch deployment to our UAT environment. And then lastly, we're going to bring those changes down from staging to our dev fork, again, using that, that sync now feature in Bitbucket. And so that syncs downward, and then that'll trigger that uh, deployment for the dev branch, using the dev repo.
What's that? Notifications? Oh, yeah, actually, you can do something like that through um, HipChat. So um, Bitbucket can talk to HipChat when a build goes. So, yeah. Um, so this is awesome. But what happens with destructive changes? Can you do those too? Yes. And destructive changes um, are, again, because when we're doing things with Salesforce, deleting things uh, like custom fields and objects is sometimes a little goofy. So we have to use destructive changes. Um, to do that. But it's easy to do with pipelines as well. Um, basically, what we're doing, and here's my uh, destructive changes um, pipeline. I've got one set up for, you can see on the, on the line 36 here, the, it's a destroy slash wildcard pipeline. So any branch that, is, uh, that starts with destroy slash will, will run this pipeline. Um, on line 40, I'm running my ant undeploy code target, so that's going to take the des those destructive changes, um, and then it's, it's going to remove those from the org, and then we want to commit um, the deletion to the master branch. So I've basically copied and pasted my save changes pipeline below that. Um, there's a little bit more setup there that'll be online, um, but let's just see that in action. So this, this custom uh, t-shirt size field on our lead object that we created before, I want to remove that. So what I need to do is create a, um, a destructive changes branch, a destroy branch off of a, a special branch that I've called uh, destroy base, which has my destructive changes XML file in there. Um, I'm going to add that custom t-shirt size field to my destructive changes XML file, add my commit message, and then commit that to, and I'm doing this to the dev repo first. And that's going to trigger that destructive changes build against the dev repo, excuse me, dev environment, Salesforce org. It's running that, deleting that field, and then running the essentially that save changes build again to commit that deletion to the repo so we don't end up redeploying that field that we just deleted. So you can see here that that deletion shows up now in the repo as well. If we want to move those changes upward to our staging and production environment, all we need to do is create a pull request for that, that destroy branch from dev and push it up to staging. That branch doesn't exist yet in staging, but Bitbucket makes it easy to automatically create that branch via pull requests. So I'm doing that here. I just created that uh, destroy branch on my staging repo. I'm merging that. And then it automatically runs that destroy build against the UAT environment, which is mapped, mapped to, this, uh, to the stage, staging repo. And then lastly, I'm just showing here that, OK, so that commit shows up here, that that field has been deleted from staging. And then lastly, we would just push that branch with a pull request up to, um, to our production environment to get that up there as well. Awesome. Um, seems a little too good to be true. Um, what are the limitations? There are a few limitations that are important to note. Um, there is a two-hour build limit currently with pipelines. Um, and again, this is, in, this is in beta. Things may change when this goes uh, GA. Um, pricing is probably going to change. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be. It's currently free in beta, and I'm assuming we'll probably have a free tier as well, like we do with most of our products. Um, build statuses from pipelines don't show up in Jira yet. And also, we don't have email or HipChat notifications from pipelines yet at this point. I'm assuming that'll change in the future. All right, I've got a minute for questions. So we are nowadays using Bamboo Cloud. Mm -hmm. You do basically the same. Bamboo Cloud is sunsetting on January. But our biggest concern with pipelines is we have scheduled uh, runs at night that actually run all tests in our sandbox. Is this possible to be done on Bitbucket pipeline? Yeah, currently, because you can only trigger a pipeline's build with a commit, what you'd have to do is basically set up a cron job that would do a commit, an arbitrary commit to whatever branch uh, pipeline branch that you'd want. There are other features that Bamboo does offer as a full uh, CI CD tool that pipelines doesn't 
by pipelines is a lot more lightweight. You could still do essentially the same thing, just with a little bit more work. I think we have time for another question. <clears throat> the um, manual changes that you know you can track and pull back down. So do you see developers doing that work or admins doing that work? Because sometimes admins make you know, 10, 20 changes at sure. once. So each one doesn't have a corresponding user story. or It's grabbing all the, the, the delta, right? If sure, sure. Yeah, I, the, um, the save changes is kind of built for the admin in mind, doing something that could be completely done through the UI. There are some tweaks to make, to make things a little bit easier so that uh, your commits are a little bit more discreet. Um, you'd basically need to rebuild, uh, recompile your dev org each time. Um, but that's a great question. We could talk a little bit more about afterwards, some strategies for that. Do we have time awesome. for one nope. more? We that's, no, we're that's done. It. All right, we'll All right. stick around. If Thank you've you got guys. other questions, thank you so much for coming this morning. We appreciate your attendance. Awesome.